Exclusive, King Charles has taken it upon himself as a personal mission to honor the fallen heroes of the Second World War at a significant ceremony. With the 80th anniversary of D-Day approaching in June, King Charles is determined to be in France to fulfill his duty. This momentous occasion holds deep personal significance for the monarch reminiscent of his late mother's involvement in a similar commemoration five years ago. As a former Royal Navy officer Charles is keen to pay his respects at the British Normandy Memorial in Versailles, which serves as a tribute to the brave souls who perished during the monumental air and sea invasion on June 6, 1944. His anticipated visit on this landmark anniversary, a pivotal moment in history, will mark his first major public appearance since he revealed his battle with cancer. According to Dickie Arbiter, the late Queen's spokesman, this event is too significant for Charles to miss, especially as it will likely be the last major anniversary with living veterans in attendance. Currently undergoing weekly treatment for a form of cancer, Charles's commitment to his duties remains steadfast. Despite his temporary withdrawal from public engagements, he continues to work behind the scenes, diligently attending to state matters. His dedication to his role as king and his sense of duty to his country are unwavering. This year's commemoration holds particular significance for Charles, given his family's deep-rooted connections to the armed forces. Standing at the very site where thousands of young soldiers landed amidst chaos and danger eight decades ago, Charles sees his presence as a solemn duty that must be fulfilled. While Buckingham Palace declined to comment on his attendance, Arbiter believes that Charles will make every effort to be present, despite his ongoing medical treatment. Reflecting on Charles's previous participation in the 75th anniversary commemorations in 2019, where he accompanied his mother Queen Elizabeth II to Portsmouth, Arbiter highlights the importance of Charles's role in honoring the sacrifices made during the war. D-Day, a pivotal moment in history, saw 156,000 soldiers from Britain, the Commonwealth, America, and their allies land on the Normandy beaches, codenamed Gold, Sword, Omaha, Juno, and Utah. Despite the initial doubts, the mission launched the invasion of German-occupied France and hastened the end of the Second World War. The names of the 22,442 men who gave their lives under British command during the landings are immortalized on the memorial's limestone flagstones, a poignant reminder of their sacrifice. King George VI and Winston Churchill's desire to observe the landings firsthand was thwarted by the risks involved, but King George delivered a stirring speech rallying the nation to continue the fight for victory and uphold the values of goodness and honor. As preparations for the 80th anniversary commemoration gather momentum, King Charles remains committed to honoring the memory of those who fought and died for freedom, ensuring their sacrifices are never f On June 6 of this year, a solemn gathering of global leaders is scheduled to take place at the memorial site to pay tribute to the brave souls who sacrificed their lives during the historic D-Day, and the ensuing Battle of Normandy. Among those hoping to attend the commemoration is Jack Mortimer, a remarkable centenarian who was a mere 20 years old when he landed with the 12 Ordnance Beach Detachment. Reflecting on his experience, Mortimer vividly recalls the harrowing moments of that fateful day. I was driving a jeep with a trailer, he recounts, and the raft took us closer to Sword Beach. There were hundreds of boats on either side of us, but disembarking was incredibly treacherous. The sea was tumultuous, and we had to wait for a sailor to change his lamp from red to green. Amidst the chaos of battle, Mortimer describes the deafening roar of battleships, the whizzing of rockets overhead, and the overwhelming sight of thousands of soldiers and ships surrounding them. Driving up that beach the noise, the smoke it frightened us to death, he admits. Hearing guns going off and seeing the sheer magnitude of the operation was overwhelming. Despite the passage of time, Mortimer's emotions remain raw. When I go there, he says, I cry. I'm grateful I survived, but I'm deeply saddened by the immense loss of life. I don't consider myself a hero, the true heroes are the ones who never made it home, 
and their sacrifices should always be remembered. Prince William, the Prince of Wales, assumes the prestigious role of Colonel-in-Chief of the Army Air Corps and is also expected to join the commemorations in Normandy. The king's unwavering commitment to duty is deeply rooted in his admiration for his mother, who served as the last head of state in uniform during the tumultuous days of the Second World War and on the historic D-Day. During the 1939-1945 conflict Charles's father Prince Philip, who passed away at the age of 99 in 2021, demonstrated valor aboard HMS Valiant in the Battle of the Mediterranean and later on the destroyer HMS Wallace during the Allied invasion of Sicily. Meanwhile, Queen Camilla's father, Major Bruce Shand, bravely served at the Battle of El Alamein in North Africa in 1942 and passed away in 2006 at the age of 89. Prince Charles himself has a distinguished military background. He earned his RAF wings in 1971 before embarking on a naval career, serving on the guided missile destroyer HMS Norfolk and frigates HMS Minerva and HMS Jupiter. Additionally, he qualified as a helicopter pilot at RNAS Yeovilton and joined 845 Naval Air Squadron, operating from the aircraft carrier HMS Hermes. His active service culminated in commanding the coastal mine hunter HMS Bronington, and he was appointed Colonel-in-Chief of the Parachute Regiment in 1977. Initially, it was anticipated that Charles's first major overseas trip of the year would be a state visit to Australia which would also include neighboring New Zealand to coincide with the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Samoa. This visit would mark his first royal visit down under as sovereign and the first by a British monarch since 2011. Amidst his temporary withdrawal from public life Queen Camilla, aged 76, has been a pillar of support for Charles, continuing with her own commitments while also managing those that were originally intended as joint events. If the trip to Australia proceeds as planned in October, she will accompany her husband, standing by his side during this significant journey. In a poignant twist of fate, assuming his late mother's responsibilities, Charles now serves as the head of the armed forces and head of state. Holding esteemed titles such as Colonel in Chief of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards, the Royal Tank Regiment and the Royal Regiment of Scotland, as well as Captain General of both the Royal Artillery and the Honourable Artillery Company, and Air Commodore in Chief of RAF Regiment, Charles embodies the legacy of service and sacrifice that defines his family's commitment to the nation. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more updates about.